I'm saying around. And then on Crash Course, we were talking about D-Day. D-Day was the largest invasion by sea in world history. Almost 160,000 Allied soldiers from different countries, ranging from Britain, Canada, US, China, crossed over to the English Channel to attack Normandy, France. Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. World War II, knowing almost nothing about intelligence gathering, interpretation of information, security for operations, misleading the enemy about his intentions, the use of spies and double agents, or the possibilities of covert actions on the wide scale behind enemy lines. He came out of the war a highly sophisticated and effective user of all these techniques. This impressive growth was typical of the man. In 1941, he had no experience in international diplomacy. By 1945, he was universally regarded as one of America's most effective diplomats. When the war began, he had never commanded any unit larger than a small training camp. When the Germans surrendered, he commanded the greatest armed force in the Western world. The entire British intelligence establishment was at Eisenhower's disposal, and it made a crucial contribution. A leading British role in intelligence was inevitable, given the late start of the Americans in the field. The operations, Overlord, or better known as D-Day. The general idea was to land at Normandy and take over. People struggled to take over Normandy due to the weather forecast. There was an incoming storm. Due to the storm and lack of equipment, the plans had changed. The initial attack was supposed to be on May 1st, but had to be moved to a later date, around somewhere in June. Many aspects led to the choice of day, of day for invasion. The tides needed to be between low and high, available moonlight, as well as all equipment was needed. The decision to attack on the 5th was hastily made, and quickly the Allied forces realized that they were grounded, therefore delaying their attack again to June 6. Quoted, Those beaches have borne code names, U Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword, the components of the Operation Overlord, which was popularly known as D-Day. The exact sites of the landings were another major decision. Numerous logistical and largely geographical considerations had to be evaluated. Among them were the characteristics of the beaches, moon phase, and tidal range, sites for airfields, sailing distances for, from channel harbors, selection of ports to be captured and covered by home-based aircraft. Then there were the location and strength of German forces and their defenses, such as the Atlantic Wall, and the underwater and landmines. Its coast and beaches were located directly opposite of the Isle of Wight, the port and rail facilities in southern England, away from the dense con concentration of people and traffic in the London metropolitan area, were available for movement of troops and supplies. The British devised a plan for two full-scale temporary ports called mulberries, which were huge concrete caissons that could be to towed and placed to function as piers. One was set up at Omaha Beach in the American sector and the other off Amarantches at Gold Beach in the British sector. Neptune, the original name for Overlord, Overlord Omaha, Utah, Mulberry, and Whale, the name given to the po pontoons on the floating pierheads. It was apparent that the success or failure of the grand design would be controlled by the combination of elements, not only the moon and the, its effect on the tides, but also sea swells, breaking surf, beach surfaces, and visibility in air and on the ground." End quote. Berman Mildred, D-Day Ge uh, Geography. Hi, I'm JPM. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the weaponry in the Battle of Normandy. And the equipment in the Battle of Normandy was quite big, which consisted of guns, pistols, rifles, heavy machine guns, anti-tank weapons, flamethrowers, hand grenades, and shotguns. This equipment was basically for all the soldiers.
All weapons were used in hopes of victory. This led to the improvement of weaponry during war. One of the weapons that was most commonly used was artillery. Artillery was classified as large guns. For artillery, they would use cannons, which they would cause big devastation and mortars, which are a type of throwing explosive to clear a field and allow the soldiers to continue their path. The large guns that are artillery were modernized version of the cannon. For the Arab battles, they used planes which were classified as fighters, heavy and regular bombers, transportation planes, and gliders. This was a recent advancement for planes were not previously used in war. For water, they used boats which were more sort of like water tanks, which were built to carry around 20 soldiers. One of their strategies was dividing their battalion by squads. Also, tanks were fundamental on these battles because it would take one tank to open up their path in order to move forward, and tanks were also considered as heavy weapons. Weapons were a large part of the war. Countries wanted the best weapons so that they can lead their countries to victory. D-Day was a very long and intense day of World War II, with lots going on. The Allied forces invaded five different beaches, including Juneau, Sword, Omaha, Utah, and Gold. Recent inventions aided the Allies in such ways that they were able to attack by many different mediums. These included Air Force troops, paratroopers, and naval officers as well. They were able to make so much happen in such little time. And now it's time for the open letter. This one goes out to James E. Wheeler, who lost his father when he was just five months of age. He grew up wondering what exactly his father did and began asking questions. James's mother eventually revealed to him many items of his father's, including his father's military uniform, old photographs, and letters he previously wrote and received. While viewing and exploring these items, James began to understand his father's journey as a paratrooper during World War II. Everywhere you look, you can do my battle.